Hey guys, so this is part two of my nylon dryer experiment. Uh, where we left off last time, I took a bunch of sample uh, bridge filament from Talman 3D, and it's been soaking in at the sink for 36 hours now, a couple samples. So I've got a small sample here that has been in there for 36 hours, and just out of curiosity, I want to see what it looks like if we go extrude this little piece through the nozzle. Hopefully see some steaming, popping, all kinds of fun stuff. To make sure that uh, we got some saturated nylon so we can really put this dryer to the test. Okay, we've got the piece of nylon loaded into the Wellspot Mini here. Um, we're gonna, I'm not gonna probably print with it, but let's, uh, let's heat this nozzle up and extrude some nylon and see if we have some wet filament to work with. Uh, okay, so the nozzle's heated up here, 245 for the nozzle. We're going to use the control features here, and we're going to go extrude some filament, and let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear the popping and sizzling. I'm not even extruding guys anymore, and uh, the steam is pushing this stuff out. Okay, we got our four rolls of wet nylon here. Uh, let's put them in the dehumidifier here, see what we can do in the dry box. So this is one hand. There's three, there's four. Like that. Move the light over so it's not touching anything. Okay, so we got our four rolls of nylon in there with our 100 watt light bulb. And we're going to go set up the control system and see if we can dry this filament out. All right, so I did some research and find you need to find the glass transition temperature of nylon, meaning when nylon softens. You don't want to go over that or else you're going to have a mess on your hands. So Matter Hackers has the bed temperature for a heated bed for nylon to be around 60 or around 70 C, which is usually just slightly above your glass transition temperature. Um, I looked online and I have a document seen here. And as you can see, it's saying, looks like in the mid fifties is the glass transition temperature. So we're going to try 45 C on this and see how it goes. Luckily, I'm not using the whole roll, so if it's if it does a terrible job, it won't be too bad. So let's go in here and set our max temperature. Let's do 45C, 113 for us in the States. Tolerance, so now we wanna say, how much can the temperature fall once the the chamber heats up to max temperature, how long can the temperature fall before it heats back up again? Obviously, the tighter the tolerance, the more the light will stay on. So let's try to keep it 5, 5 C tolerance. So it'll turn on at 40 C and turn off at 45 C. And how long do we want to hold it at full temp? Well, my plan here is I'm going to pull the, let's, let's pull filament at four hours eight hours, 12 hours, I might be asleep. So let's do four, eight, I'll try for 12 or around there and 24 hours. So I want this to keep heating for 24 hours and then it'll go into its standby mode and hold the humidity at the lowest point. So then it asks, what do you want the maximum humidity to be in the bucket after 24 hours? And then hold it at that. So let's, uh, Let's see if we can keep it to 7%. There we go. And it's on. And you can see here, the temperature, ooh, it's cold in here. So it's 18C in the bucket right now. 64% humidity. That'll drop really quickly. It's probably, 
Yeah, you can see it rising because that wet filament is in there. Um, you can see your heat is on and the time is zero hours, so that'll count up. So we'll come back and pull filament in, let's say, I guess six hours. See you then. Okay, so six hours has passed and this is our first roll of filament, uh, nylon, bridge nylon we've taken out of the chamber. So we're going to go and print a 20 by 20 by 20 cube and see what kind of quality we get. See if six hours was enough in the chamber at 45 C to dry out filament that's been sitting in water for a day and a half. So let's see what happens. Okay, next trial, we have the 24 hour dried in the uh, filament dryer and we'll print another cube here and see what kind of results we get. Hey guys, so the test is done. Um, we went and tested at 47C, 53 to 54C, and 60C, and we'll see the results of what happened once we took the nylon that we soaked in the sink for two days and see if we could dry it out. So let's take a look at what we have here. So this is 46C after six hours, and you can see there's a bunch of junk down here in the corner, not very good. So we bumped it and went 46C for 18 hours. It's this one here. And you can see it's a little less than the six, but it's still, still there. Went 24 hours, and it's, it's even less still, but it's still there. So then I bumped it to 53C, which is right at the glass transition temperature of the nylon, for another 24 hours, and looks pretty darn good. Uh, maybe, maybe a smidge but not much. So we found that having the temperature at the glass transition temperature is, it speeds things up with the, the drying process. And there's nothing super magical about the glass transition temperature, except from the temperature at the glass transition temperature and on, your physical properties start to break down. Um, but you gotta remember we're melting these things at 230 C versus the glass transition temperature of nylon of 53 C. So if you set it to 55, 56, as long as the filament isn't under a load, it should still retain its physical properties. You're not really exceeding the glass transition temperature by that much. So I decided to go back and try running the same test again uh, with the temperature at 60 C to see if we could do even better. So I went and soaked some more nylon in a, a tub of water for two days and we ran the test for at 60C for uh, certain intervals. Let's take a look and see how the results from that happened. So we set the temperature for 55C and let's see what happens to the uh, filament and how well it dried out. So this is 55C for eight hours. And if you look, you've got some issues down here in the corner still, but not nearly as bad as what we were talking about eight hours at 43C for comparison. So then we did 55C for 24 total hours. You see there's just a little bit left, not much. So I said, okay, at tw 24 hours have passed. Let's turn the temperature up to 60C for the remaining time. So for after 24 hours for another uh, amount of time, a total of 42 hours at 60C. There you go. There, that's a that's a good nylon block. It compares very well to the control, the original block that was right out of the package. So 60C for 42 hours knocked it completely out. Somewhere between 24 and 42 hours, your filament completely dried out. Now this is obviously an extreme test. You're not going to have nylon in a sink for two days absorbing water. It's going to be 40% humidity in the house and absorbing water. So I don't expect that it should take 42 hours to dry out your filament. But it proves a point. You can restore nylon filament back to useful filament, even if it's completely saturated, using the drying chamber. So I consider it fairly successful. Now let's talk about uh, 
one of the issues I found and the ways to fix it. So if you've been following along, I used a 100 watt light bulb in the bottom of the bucket, hopefully to achieve higher temperatures and help dry these things out faster, make things a little more efficient. Um, one thing I didn't account for was when you go put a uh, filament roll vertically inside the chamber, while most of the ambient temperature in the chamber is what is measured on the control box that I created, obviously the temperature right near the light bulb is going to be higher than the ambient temperature. Uh, so if the ambient temperature reads 60, then if you were to put your hand within an inch of the light bulb, I guarantee you that light bulb isn't, that you're not gonna feel 60C, you're gonna feel something much hotter. So I was testing 60C and came home and took a look at my roll of nylon filament and found this. Check that one out, isn't that cool? So what happened here was the filament was sitting this way, right? And this side was sitting close to the light bulb, right? Light bulb was on the bottom and it was starting to get warm. So that tells me that either A, I need to put the filament vertically and get it farther away from the light, which could be difficult. It's not as convenient as just hanging it in there. Or the simpler thing to do is go to a 75 watt bulb instead of a 100 watt bulb. So I, I went to the 75 watt bulb for safety purposes. And I let it run at uh, max temperature to see what's the highest temperature you can achieve. Uh, with the 100 watt bulb, I had no problem achieving 60 C in 20 minutes or so. Uh, the 75 watt bulb, it maxes out at a, in my basement in when it's probably mid 60s in the basement uh it maxed out at 57 or 58 c which should be warm enough to dry out most of your nylons uh ninja flex they recommend 200 f so you won't get that high with that but i suppose if you let ninja flex sit long enough in 57 58 c it probably would dry out so it's really going to be a balance of safety versus speed and in my gut reaction i usually design for safety so the design was changed to a 75 watt bulb so there you have it guys that's the control box filament dryer uh, diy at home while it was very successful at controlling the temperature inside the chamber uh, we ran into some snags with the heating element itself i feel like you could use a 100 watt light bulb if you went in there and built yourself a uh thermal shield deflector so a heat deflection device put a sheet metal piece in there to deflect the heat away from the filament so that it heats the ambient or heats the ambient air as opposed to heating the the spool itself one thing i'm interested in is the filament was fine I'm questioning what this spool is made out of so i know what the melting point of that if you had a spool that had was made out of abs and you put the filament on there would it work better? Um, it obviously, whatever this spool is made of has a lower melting point than the filament. So it's interesting. But overall, you've got yourself a nice system that will hold a temperature of about 60 C, um, depending on your ambient temperature in the room. It will time it for as long as you want, then it will shut it off and just keep enough energy in there to keep your, your humidity in the bucket low until you can use the, the system. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. I plan on releasing a document for this. So if you want to build your own, uh, you can do that and let me know how it goes. Obviously, um, with anything where you got heat involved, just like a 3D printer, make sure you observe it and make sure you're using it safely. Um, don't want any fires. Shouldn't have any problems. Like I said, I ran the 75, 75 watt bulb for days and nothing nothing happened to any spools or anything the 100 watt bulb is a little dangerous so i wouldn't recommend it so any comments you have that'd be great um hope you enjoyed it and uh we'll see you next time